Welcome to this AFC Bournemouth match day vlog. Is hospitality at AFC Bournemouth worth it? Well, the premium experience in football, it's on the rise, much to the annoyance of a large number of match-going fans across the Premier League. The reason why? Well, clubs up and down the land are seemingly offering increased percentages of match day tickets to those who want to pay more for a luxury experience. And in some cases, it has squeezed out the people that just want to turn up in the stands and cheer on their side to getting three points. Now, Cherries at the Vitality Stadium have one of the lowest percentages of hospitality in the Premier League. So in what has been described as a move to increase revenue, but also gauge interest ahead of a potential new stadium, it has introduced new hospitality packages this season with experiences such as the King's Plaza, the boardroom, and also Cherry Orchard, formerly a fans bar, all becoming premium hospitality experiences. For one weekend, we became part of the Prawn Sandwich Brigade, which by the way, has its own Wikipedia page, and we reviewed the experience. So, as AFC Bournemouth played Manchester United, we sampled the delights of everything it had to offer. What was it like? Was the food any good? Was the service up to scratch? What do you actually get for your money? And was it worth it? So yeah, this is a very different type of match day vlog from us, but look, I know we dressed up smartly for this one. We have to, okay? But we don't forget our roots, all right? We start in the QP. Welcome to this back of the net match day vlog. I'm Sam. I'm Tix. We're at the QP and it's early. What's it? 1 p.m. at the moment for a half five kickoff, Tix. And by the way, what's going on here? You look very dapper today. Well, thank you, my friends. I'm trying. To... We are in hospitality today. Yeah. For uh, for Jeff's birthday, uh, we'll see Jeff in a little bit as well, and maybe some of the little things that we got him. Barra laughs at the QP. Love that from you. There's a barrel there, um, and it's getting really busy here, isn't it? Yeah. starting to really build we've heard there might be some special guests here later yeah there might be if there are it's because of us right um maybe we'll get some footage of that later on but for now we need to find jeff aka the milk tray man the milk tray man so jeff a big question is have you got any chocolates with you <laughs> yeah milk tray obviously <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, it is a big birthday for you. I mean, yeah. 40 years old, mate. You look. <coughs> yeah. Do you want to tell people the truth? 60. Today. You, don't look, you, you genuinely don't look 60. Thank you. Well, you know, it's uh, years of hard living. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> and look, um, tell us which company is providing hospitality today. It's it's us. It's, it's Wildwood, which is the company I'm working for. Uh, and um, in partnership with Back of the Net. So. <laughs> <laughs> what's I'll just what's shut this? Up. Don't what's this? Same as me. This is weird, isn't it? You alright? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. How are we? Mate, you look smart. Thank you. you. Really as do you. smart. As do you. Um, big day today. Mm. What did you go for, mate? Did you go for the duck leg? Did you go? I can't remember. <laughs> the menu options were a bit. Oh, right. Out there, weren't they? I'm a bit of a fussy eater. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, yeah, do I'm, they do like jelly and ice cream? No, or what? but I, the desserts look good. Yeah. So, but I'm, yeah, I'm missing the hot dog already, mate. The little, <laughs> little 38 minute hot dog. But no, I'm looking forward to it, mate. It's nice. Jeff's looking suave. Yeah. Is yeah. hospitality worth it? So, this vlog is going to be all about is Cherry Orchard hospitality <laughs> worth it? We're going to go through it. Get win if we win, mate. I'll we'll go get four tigs if we beat Man United. We get a program, we get a three course meal, we get a welcome Prosecco. And uh, maybe there'll be some. Oh no, like no cruise campo. Sam still at the club. That's fine, isn't it? I'm still, yeah. Happy with that. Happy with that. And um, I don't know why you're directing that at me. Like that's all I care about. I care about the football. It's all about the football. Manchester United. I know. Yes, I felt like teams like Manchester United. You've got to you've got to compete with them. So prawn sandwiches. I thought, yeah, it's the day to do corporate hospitality. But will we get something from the game? <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> that too. I'm feeling confident. Oh, the, 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 this sort of uh, this sort of game, you know, they got injuries, we've got injuries, but I fancy us to put in a performance because it's Man U. We always raise our game for them, so yeah, why not? <laughs> Jeff's opening his presents now. I've gone away from the AFC <laughs> Bournemouth theme and I've taken a bit of a risk, so yeah. <laughs> Right. I've got a, it's in that bag, yeah, so help yourself. Interesting. Never heard of it? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my scarf. That's your scarf. <laughs> <laughs> I just left it in the bag. 
Rumours of yes. Dom Solanke yeah, might yeah. not be available. How, and we've got, how have we gone to a place where we've got no wingers either? I don't know how that's happened. Um, so yeah, it might be a bit, but we're in a luxury position. We're in a nice position where we can change a few bits around. You know, you might see Favre, for example. Yeah, yeah. Watara will probably get more of a shift. So yeah, listen, we're in a nice position. Um, Newcastle are leading as we speak. Yeah. So that's going to hurt Man U. And hopefully we can hurt them again, mate. I mean, listen, they've probably, they're probably a little bit stronger than last time, but we actually ripped them apart. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the more of these I have, the more I'm confident. So, who knows, story. mate? Yeah, it's done. Come on, let's go. So, with the pub done, it was off to Vitality Stadium, and outside the ground, there was a soft ticket check in place on the perimeter. As for this game, the club were trialling allowing home supports to purchase alcohol from the various points of sale situated around the ground and then allow them to drink it anywhere within the green perimeter fencing, which basically encompasses the entire footprint of the stadium. But first, through to the cherry orchard and up the stairs, a walk that many of us will have done when it was the 1910 bar. And inside, once the trusty lamb yard is on, you then enter the bustling scene full of diners, football's on the big screen and the bar to the left. Now where we were, unlike the Champions top floor restaurant above, there actually is no view of the pitch in Cherry Orchard. But since the 1910 days, the place has actually been redecorated really nicely and does feel like a premium experience. Now after grabbing my Prosecco as I walked in, I then sat down and had a browse through the complimentary programme. There were waiting staff on hand to take drinks orders, which you could either put on a tab or pay as you go individually. I ordered three bottles of wine, one of each, and they actually arrived within a few minutes. So fair play for being so quick. Right, on to the food. Let's see what we got. Here we go. Jeff has got his food out. Um, Jeff, this looks good. This is a beetroot salad of sorts, is it? Beetroot salad. I think there's some grapefruit in there. There's obviously some cherry red smearing gone on there. So Andoni's probably been at it, organised it. You know, got it on the plate. In a nice way. <laughs> oh, cherry red smearing. What's, what have you got, Sam? What's that? I've got a uh, salt beef croquette with um, some kind of sauce and salad. So let's see. Uh, let's Talking to this. <laughs> Newcastle were 4 0 up here. Wow. So, whilst we were sat down there, a number of cherry staff that were there popped their heads around the door to say hello to various people in the cherry orchard, including Jim Favola, Matt Payne, head of creative, was there, and also Frano himself as well. He came down to say hello, and birthday boy Jeff got a photo of that beautiful man that is stepping into Richard Hughes's shoes. I actually asked him whether he'd been brushing up on his Italian to emulate our departing head of recruitment. He declined to comment. Right, Steve's main course. Steve, talk us through what you've got, come on. Atlantic Court pod. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's... Uh, I don't know, this is, I think this is watercress. Sort of, and uh, some sweet potatoes. Oh, lovely. With a, it looks like a pea sort of puree. Pea puree. Oh, yeah. uh, and Jeff, Jeff, what have well, you got to talk me through it? I'd like to second Steve on the pea puree. I think that's, that's obviously the thing. They've probably got a lot of that sitting around in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, we've then got a rosti, which is uh, it's a bit like your scotch egg from the first right, course. Have a look. Yeah, plates, plates, yeah, nice branding. But yeah, it looks looks very tasty. And, uh, and asparagus spears dressed with watercress, obviously. Beauty. Got roll as well. But there was also a quiz as well. So Ross, the MC, kept us entertained on the mic. And uh, during the quiz, well, we were looking at it, thinking there's a good chance of us winning this at half time you can find out exactly how we did. There was also a player interview as well, and this time it was former Cherry and Manchester United player, Russell Beardsmore, who was with Ross and Steve Fletch, who came down. Great to have you here. Thank you so much for, for being here today. So, of course, for you, what's it like being back down here at MC Norman? Any strength. I'm worried about the game. Is everyone, everyone going to support or not score-wise? So, it, don't ask me the score. I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, how was your main course? Oh, main course, oh, delicious, yeah. Nice bit of egg, bit of yeah. flavour, which gone. I, I like, as gone. people will know. Yeah, all gone, and uh, yeah, feeling, feeling very upbeat, and uh, 
and we've just had some inside inside news on who might be starting as well, which has obviously made us feel a little bit better. There was also a classic heads or tails style game with a spot prize where our very own Steve Hensman nearly got through to win the big prize. Please either go heads or tails. Oh, I'm, feeling tense. I'm not even part of this. Steve went for the wrong option when he was pulled up on stage, but fair play to the winner. She chose well as well. She won the, the signed shirt. Fair play to her. During the pre-match entertainment as well, there was the option as well to enter a silent auction, but the main event came just before kickoff, where Steve Fletcher then emerged to present our very own Mr. Hayward with a special gift or two. Check this out. However, before you move back upstairs, because Fletcher is upstairs, um, we have got an announcement to make over to you to do it. Yeah, so on Tim and I, we got a huge birthday today. Um, the boys from the AFCB podcast, which is all over social media and YouTube, have a huge person amongst them who is 60. And his name is, I mean, get on the stage, because I've got a couple of Come on, Jeff. It's Mr. Jeff Hayward. Well done, Mr. Jeff. Come on, Jeff. Come on, pal. So this is the booby prize. I was given this to myself as a commentary of my goal I scored against Grimsby. Now I'm, I was asked to sign it. I didn't do this in case you think, you think I'm something I'm not. But it was given to me. It's a one off I have signed it for you. That's a booby prize. But the most important prize is the boys came to me yesterday, uh, came to the training ground, and we got you a signed Dom Sainty. Oh yes, Dom, oh my god, indeed. So I got Dom to sign it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. This bit was taken out and let him sign it, but and that's for you, that's a special prize. We were wishing many happy 60th returns. Yeah. Mr. Jeff Hayward. Enjoy your day. Happy birthday. Dom Solanke, Dom Solanke signed for me. Look at that beautiful, from Mazala Designs. Very, very, very touched by that. Steve's gone for the rhubarb crumble. I have. Yeah, will that crumble as much as you, mate? A bit like me on the stage there. Yeah. I've already started mine. I've got the green tea mousse. Why is Hayward behind the bar? Is he doing the washing up down there? It's a red and black cake made by my mother in law. Can we take a look at this bad boy? So, this cake was provided to us by um, Suzanne, yeah. my mother in law, who, um, trust me, I mean, this is, this is one, of, one of her monumental efforts. <laughs> So uh, when she applied them two story as well. When she when she applied for Bake Off. <laughs> right, here we go. It's beautiful. It is great. Very really nice. Mm. Yeah. The man, the man from Milk Tray has actually, actually bought chocolates. Bought chocolates. <laughs> These are cherry chocolates, cherry centers. The milk chocolates, non cherries. Well, can I try one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what, um, is it, uh, you know, which one's the cherry? The cherries and all these. The oh, cherry ones. Oh, it's a cherry one. Oh, I love a cherry one. I love one of these ones. It looks like it's actually a cherry. Mm. Oh, they're good. Everyone likes good. They are good. So at this point in time, we're gearing up for the match. It's worth noting on the price of my ticket. It says £63. Now, this of course was not the price of the hospitality package as a whole, I wish, but it is built into the overall price of the Cherry Orchard experience. And we'll show you the breakdown at the end of the video. If you're not doing hospitality, the price for this exact block is £45. So I'm not too sure why it was £63 on this ticket. As in terms of watching the match itself, the experience itself is no different. I mean, there's no padded seat or anything, but Maybe you could say that this builds in the price of being warm at half time where you've got coffee, tea and cakes and also you've got waiting staff available to you as well. But anyway, we'll come to that. The cakes, by the way, were decent. We've got Kirk Toby. By the way, mate, mm. 
fantastic job on the vlog last week. I tried, I tried. I mean, look. What a game for me to miss though, eh? No, I know, I know. It was going so well for about the first half without scoring and then obviously we got a good goal through Tavernier, but then we just didn't manage the last 30 minutes, did we? So um, challenges this week as well for Andoni with injuries and illnesses. So um, we'll see what we can do. On to the game today. There are rumours rife that like Dom might not be available. Well, mm. we know that Semenyo is not available, but yeah. you know, murmurings that Sinistera may start. I mean, how do you want us to approach this against United today? You like, you know, got to go for it or what? Yeah, because off the back of the Luton result, it played on my mind for a few days, and I think when he made those substitutions at Kenilworth Road, we should have probably fell into a back three. I don't like a back three, but when you look at the personnel we had, we probably could have had a wing back system. So if we are struggling for wingers, and we know we are, I do wonder if you flip a three today, three three centre backs, two wing backs. You've got Kirkes, you've got Aaron, you've got Dango that could play this role and I do wonder if then you can get you now and Dom Solanke partnered up. That's what I'm thinking with the personnel we've got available, could you have a go at a 3-5-2? Every Bournemouth manager tries it. Can Andone, Andoni do it because he's a very talented coach? What's your prediction? Go on. Mm. Come on, Kirk. Be one, 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 one. Three course meal, fully full, a few glasses of wine, lovely. Tom George's face, yes, even better. What's the team news, Tom? Got my news bag on, take that. Um, but yeah, I was one off on the ball with one because Luis Sinistero is back, which is uh, positive. So yeah, he's in, um, and Clive goes back into his 10 roll. So yeah, that's good to have a couple of wiggers in there. So Watara and Sinistero, decent subs. But yeah, we got a few out as of they, but it's pretty strong, mate. Pretty strong. We're going in, we get three points. Let's go. Come on. Now, our seat was located in block seven, row C. That's in the main stand. It was an excellent view of the pitch. Now, it's time to go up to our seats. We've got Robbie Trent here. Robbie, how are you, mate? You all right? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, good to be back. Um, Man United at home. Does yep. it worry you or not? No, no. The, the season now, you know, we had a good win up there, and so I think we play with freedom, we can we can win today. What's your prediction? What you gonna... I'm going to go 2-1 to Bournemouth today. He's confident. frustrating because that's always the first clear shot they've had. Literally a shot and turn goal. We've had we've had so many chances. Really not much threat at all from Man United. They had a lot of the ball but they didn't do anything with it. Uh, 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 Tom Tom Rick, don't we looked at. No, it's a goal. One all. Time seems to stand still. Very much so. Loved it. I had the ball as well, Dave. Was it onside? Was it onside? You're going to get to my eyes. Yeah. My eyes Harry Maguire. Oh no, we kicked off. We're fine. Wait, Harry, Harry Maguire's trying to turn.
So half time it was then and up the stairs we go and down the stairs and into the cherry orchard where we had cakes, a large selection of them, tea and coffee. Plus the quiz winners were announced too. So who won? That's right. the 18. We've made the tie break. We've made the tie break. Tom's up there with two other tables. <laughs> wins the two bottles of wine per table. So, oh, if bottle you wine. to get this answer in here, how many Premier League appearances oh, did Matthew Matissier make in his career? So we're going to go Premier League only. I'll go uh, 375. 374. 374. It's tactical up here today. It's tactical. Okay. Let's go down there. Okay, so one more for 375. One more for 374. And this is game made 270. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Get in. We were winners. We won the quiz. <laughs> well, done you, well done to the winners of the quiz. Okay. We are now <laughs> literally taking off for the second half. Second half. Oh, by the way, we're out for the second half. Wow. As if by magic, we're just all saying Man United pose no threat. And like Neto, his records look great, right? No, I think the one I can remember, it went straight back to Salah. Salah. Yeah. Andrew. And then I remember Norwich on penalties, but Cantwell hit the bar, so we didn't have to stay with him. Mate, that came out of nowhere. That, Nate, that came out of absolute nowhere. <laughs> Apparently it was never a pen Really? I looked online and everyone was saying never a pen. I text Catherine and said, Smith's arms down by his song. Handboard Smith isn't arguing, but the ball takes a massive deflection off Christie. Tony Harrington was keen to give that. Well, <laughs> Justin Kleiber off Unal on. Just go for it, why not? I know. What? I love that. Yeah. God, we've got a pen. We've got a pen at the last minute. Let's score it. We've got a pen. Oh, wings on the edge. I thought it was a, I thought it was a pen. So no one knows whether it's a free kick or a penalty. Just text and say, I think it's outside the box. Yeah. Might be outside the box. Oh. Should be a pen, everyone said. Right, okay, come on then, let's go. Come on. Man United can Check breathe the bags. again. Check the fucking bags. Full time. Two all. Man United fans are loving the draw against Bournemouth. Celebrate that. Shows how far they've come, eh? Full time then, two all at Desmond. Right, full time, two all then. It was frustrating, but back to Cherry Orchard it was, and I quickly got the fan cams sorted out, uh, but not before the player of the match, Ryan Christie, came out for a quick interview. Here's a bit of what he had to say. Probably frustrating, but I think just because it obviously the chance to be created, and um, you know, on another day, I fancy it's a score probably four or five goals today, so. We'll admit then to very few chances. Um, I think we should take all three points, but um, credit to the boys. Listen, you know, mind you, are coming here and escaping somehow with a point, you know, which shows how far we've come. I know you can't say too much to be controversial, but I will. It's a stonewall penalty. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, the, the contact, I've seen it back, is three inches outside the box where he touches him, but he fouls him in the box. Now, I'll take your mind back, and I've said this upstairs, two our penalty we give away at Newcastle away this season when Adam yeah. Smith grabbed hold of Shah, the centre half, two yards outside the 18 yard box, he fell down inside the box and they give a penalty. <laughs> Absolutely, well, that must be deserved. You don't miss that for today. Ladies and gentlemen, you're proud of that. Good morning, Christy.
And with some wine left on the table, we happily got through that. There was the option of buying uh, more beers and stuff. There were teas and coffees available and the bar remained open for about another hour. But come half past eight, it was time to go home. Although myself, Tom and Steve went into town. We went to places that I'm way too old for, but it was a good night and I got back very late and uh, yeah, enjoyed the day. However, was the hospitality side good value for money? Right, the hospitality package at the Cherry Orchard. Yeah, quite a lot. Now, this isn't sponsored by AC Bournemouth. Uh, what it was sponsored by, Wildwood PR. As we said in the vlog, check them out. Thanks to those guys that uh, did that for us. It was absolutely brilliant. So we're gonna be honest and maybe ruthless about whether it's value for money or not. Now, first thing you can say is if you buy the packages in bulk, I think three or more games, you can get it for cheaper with a 10% discount. But look, we're gonna take it for what it is, what we paid. And when you build in the value, this is, this is where you kind of start to work it out. So you get a welcome Prosecco. Um, <sighs> I mean, I've been to places where you can get a, a glass of Prosecco for like five quid, but let's call it 10, let's be generous. You've got your program for three pound 50. Then you've got your three course meal. And I've been, you know, I've ate at various places around Bournemouth Pool from, you know, the likes of the Guildhall Tavern and Pool that's got a, you know, very good reputation for that kind of food. I'd say it was quite close to that. So I'm gonna be maybe generous and say main, 25 quid, uh, 15 pound starter, 10 pound dessert. Really, I'll be looking to go out and pay a quarter of that if I was eating, or maybe half that if I'm feeling a little bit flush. So let's call the three course meal, maybe 50 pounds all in. Afterwards as well, you've got your selection of fine local and French cheeses, chutney, savory biscuits, that kind of thing. What's that, 15 quid maybe? The ticket price itself, now this is where I was a bit confused because you can buy that ticket for 45, but it said 63. I'm gonna assume it includes like being warm at half time, your coffee, your tea's coffees, of which you can have as, as much as you want, and cakes as well. So that there is 141 pounds 50. So there is a, a shortfall here. So this is all subjective here. So you get your souvenir lanyard, right? Of course, that you know, there's the prize game where, where you know, the heads or tails game. That's your kind of part of the entertainment. You get the player interview before the game. You get it after the game. You get the quiz as well. Waiting staff available to you. Sky TV showing the lunchtime game or whatever game is on at the time. Plus the fully licensed bar as well. So is that worth the remainder? It's up to you. What did I think? I thought it was all right, actually. Look, I wouldn't want to do it all the time. Uh, if I had the money, would I? Probably not, but that's just me. I'd rather get in and amongst it. But I don't know. I feel as though it's something to, that's quite nice to do, like once a season. One thing I can say is that the staff are absolutely superb and the environment is very um, premium, I've got to say. So if you can do it once a season, I think it's a nice thing to do. But would I do it week in, week out? Absolutely not. But I can see why it's a popular package and I can see why the, the club want to do it. It's um, It comes at a time where we're in transition both on and off the pitch and with the kind of new training ground being built and the new stadium around the corner, I think they do need to sort of work out what kind of tiers of hospitality they can do. Hence your entry range into it with King's Plaza where you're paying 89 pounds a ticket. Now I know the venue's not particularly great, but I'm pretty sure that when there'll be a new stadium, there will be lots of different ranges so that if you feel as though you can do it, you'll have the option to. And so I commend them for that. And I suppose they are managing to work out exactly what they need. I don't like it though, where there are fans that are going on to like, for instance, right now, if you log on to the, the ticket website and look for a, a ticket for Brentford, you think, oh, I, oh, you know what, I can go to Brentford. The only tickets available are 89 quid in the 10 McDougal stand. I think eventually, if those King's Plaza packages don't get purchased, they do then get put down to normal ticket price again. But sometimes it does feel like it's getting increasingly more difficult to grab hold of a ticket. Like I've got to be on the website at 10 a.m. every Tuesday because I get tickets match to match. If I don't and I risk being even a few hours late, there's a chance that I won't get a ticket. So, but all in all though, um, I must say, yeah, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the package. I think it's been well put together and um, everything around it was superb. I think it was made more special by the fact it was a big day, Jeff 60th, where we did have the added extras of like Frano coming down to say hi, which I think Jeff spoke to him beforehand. Fletch doing the 
the print from Mazala Designs. Without that, would I think it's as good value? I don't really know, to be honest. So look, this is still up in the air, but at least you know what you can get. And I would say that if you can afford to do it once a season, then why not do it? Because you might actually enjoy it. As for the game itself, well, frustrating. There will be a show out later in the week where we go over what's happened, the dodgy VAR decisions, and a lot more to size, plus some lazy punditry which suggests that Don Solanke is playing for the wrong club if he wants to be chosen for England. Harsh, but I expect nothing less from some of the lazy media pundits we've got out there. I appreciate this has been a match day vlog with a difference, but if you like it and you want more of this kind of stuff, then you know what to do. You can like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. And good news, we're back in the stands. I don't really like asparagus anyway, to be honest. <laughs>